in the repair shop today, an unlikely visitor in the shape of a Roman deity. So it takes two of you to fix Hercules, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> cool, blimey. I thought you guys were stronger than this guy. No, 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 What's no, going this on? This is a really, really, really clever fix. And the upholstery guards are smiling on Susie and Sonnes. Oh, look oh. at that! <laughs> that was lucky. End of the bobbin. First through the doors of the repair shop is Jane Maddy from Lincolnshire, with an unusual package. Hi there. Hello. Please come over. She's hoping furniture restorer Will Kirk will cast his expert eye over its contents. What's in the box? It's a smoker stand. A smoker stand? I don't think we've actually ever had a smoker stand in before. So, what can you tell me about this? It's always been around. It belonged to my grandparents, my grandfathers. He always smoked a pipe, and I've got memories of it with pipes all the way along there, right from being little. It seems to be in pretty good condition, apart from, obviously, the missing leg, which yeah. you see it's in here. It's there. Those what two, are these pieces I, they're here? just bits that fit in the top there. I presume that's for I the presume it's where or... they uh, tap possible. their tobacco. Gosh. It's very fancy. Are you a, a pipe smoker yourself? <laughs> Not recently, no. No, I can't say I've ever smoked a pipe. <laughs> and I think that one was for matches. matches. probably, yeah. And then that's your little striking plate. How clever. Striking matches on. I actually smoked a pipe for a year when I was in art school. Did you? That. Yeah. I thought it was trendy. It yeah. probably wasn't yeah. very trendy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, d I definitely didn't have anything like this. So you've inherited this from your grandfather? He died many years ago. Um, yeah. I was brought up by my grandparents. He was a cobbler got great memories of being in the shop from very young and just stood watching my granddad for, well, it seemed like hours at the time, just mending the shoes. Was he smoking a pipe whilst mending them? I think he did do, yes. <laughs> yes. It's probably one of the only reminders I've got of my grandparents. I know it's, it's only a, a little thing, but to me it absolutely means the world, so I'd like it really fixed so that I can have it on display in my house again. I will do everything I can. That would be wonderful. Well, I'll let you know how we get on. It's Brilliant. Very nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming down. I'm quite nervous about leaving my grandfather's smoking stand behind. Um, the stand has a lot of uh, nice memories for me. Memories of my granddad sat there puffing on his pipe. Um, and the smell of tobacco brings that back as well. And my grandma busily probably hoovering round it and polishing it and telling them off for smoking too much. How are we doing, Will? This is Jane's smoking stand, eh? If I had a pipe right now, <laughs> I'd be resting my pipe upon the top. Well, not literally, but in these holes here. So it's missing a leg, or you've got you've got them. So I have the leg here. Yeah. <laughs> so the leg's broken off, while the wood's broken off underneath, yeah. and then the leg's popped out. So I need to patch that wood back in and glue that back in. So what about these bits here? They're missing as well. I didn't even notice that. I don't know if that's brass. That that could actually be brass. Is it? Do you think so? Yeah, I think so, maybe. Oh, this is loose as well. Right. Well that's another thing on my list. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then a general clean and yeah. a wax. Yeah, but not going to clean out that, no. are we? Because that's her grandfather's tobacco. Yeah, no, we've got to leave that in there. So once you've done this, yeah. what you should do is just take it over to Steve and see if he can make those. And I'm sure he's going to help you out with that. Have a good one. Cheers, Jay. Next to arrive at the workshop, Carl Sebastian and his dad, Jeff. They've brought with them a piece of classic 60s furniture for the attention of master saddle maker and leather expert, Susie Fletcher. Hi, I'm Susie. I'm Jeff. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Carl, nice to meet you. Carl, nice to meet you too. My word, what is this? It's a leaf chair. I've never seen anything like it. It's just from my nan's house. So this belongs to your nan? Yeah, it used to. We call her Nonna. Nonna? Yeah, she's Italian. When my granddad passed away, she um, was downsizing and she didn't have enough room to put it in her, her new house. 
So she called me straight away saying, I know how much she loved the chair, and she gave it to me. So this belonged to your nan? Yeah. So was Nana into the swinging 60s? I'd know. say so. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's pretty cool. This was set up by the record player. Right. So Tony, Carl's granddad, uh -huh. used to lie in here and listen to the music. Every time I went to my nan's house, yeah, from a baby, I'd always, everyone would race to sit in the chair. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> could more than one of you sit in it? Yeah, yeah, we could. We used to pretend it's a boat. So, what does it feel like to sit in? Lovely, Amazing. It? Yeah. It is. is it? You fall asleep in it. Oh, really? So, um, how exactly did it end up in this state? Well, basically, Carl, his sisters and his cousins, they all used to sit on the chair. And then it got to a stage where this is getting tighter and tighter mm. and brittle. And Carl's uh, cousin sat on it one day and it just split, it just oh, gave way. Oh, That's okay. after all the kids have been sitting on it. Wow. <laughs> well, we'll have to see what I can do here. But uh, looking at this grain here, uh, I, I believe this is buffalo hide. Okay. It's very, very strong and it has a very prominent grain. So um, my plan is to use as close to the original leather as possible. Thank you so much, Carl, for bringing it in and putting your trust in me. And I can't wait to get started. So we'll be in touch. We'll leave with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, it will mean a lot to have it repaired, um, thinking about the way it used to be, seeing the kids um, playing on the, the chair. It's always been like a, a feature um, in the sitting room. You know, it'd be good to once it's repaired, to be able to use it and, uh, yeah, make the most of it again. And uh, probably bring back the memories I had as a, as a child in the chair. Based on the shape of a leaf, the chair's design dates back to 1967 and was originally available in other fabrics as well as leather. Hanging chairs reached the peak of their popularity in the swinging 60s. But this leaf chair is still highly collectible. So now I've got a chance to look at this leaf chair that Carl left with me, and I am scratching my head a little bit. I'm concerned because it has many angles to it which create this overall shape that, that literally just cradles the body when it's lying in there. And um, I, I've never done anything like this before, so uh, perhaps Sonas, if you're available, could I ask you to come and have a look at this for me, please? Sure. Sonas Noranvari is an expert in furniture restoration, both traditional and modern. So um, you can see how badly damaged this is. Wow. And it's had a lot of use, hasn't it? My quandary is making a pattern yep. for this that it creates this bowl shape. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to make a pattern somehow. Uh, it might be a good idea to maybe use calico. Calico is just a really um, cheap fabric, like a cotton. So Apple. we make three patterns, yep. stick them together, yep. offer them up to the frame, yep. and see where we're at. Perfect. OK, sounds like a plan. So I just need to take this leather off then. Do you okay. need help with that? Or yeah, yeah, that'd be great. OK. Over in the carpentry corner, Will is getting to grips with the legless smoker stand. Before patching the base with a new piece of wood, he's first cutting away any damaged timber. Sometimes, when working on a piece like this, it can be really hard to know um, how much wood to remove. There's always a risk of going too far, taking out more wood than you need to. It has to be structurally sound, so I think I've gone to the right level here. It's not a bad fit, actually. It doesn't look flush with the surface now, but once that's dried, then I can chisel and plane it down nice and smooth. Look at that 
that's nice and flush now. I'm now going to um, drill out a new hole for the leg to go back in. So just trying to work out the direction of the leg and make sure I drill it out the first time spot on. That feels like a tight fit. Even without the glue, I am that certain that's going to be strong enough to hold it. I'm actually going to turn it around now. Perfect. I'm really pleased with that. Now the smoker stand stands again. Back on three legs, it's time for Will to call in a favour from clockmaker Steve. What Steve? on earth is that? That, my friend, is a pipe stand. A pipe stand? Yeah. How many pipes could you get in that? Ten pipes for the pipe enthusiast. Right, OK. There's some brass rings on the top here. They seem to be missing one, two, three of them. Is there any way that you can make up three more? Does that come off? I don't think... Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be a nice touch because Jane won't be expecting that. It'd be like oh, a nice sort of right, okay. finishing touch. Yeah, yeah. So I'll leave you with that. I'll get on to polishing this right. and let me know when you're ready. Thanks, Steve. Many of the items that arrive at the repair shop are treasured family pieces passed on from one generation to the next. But others have meaning to a wider community. Liz Argent from the Westbury Heritage Society in Wiltshire has a heavenly body in need of some emergency surgery. Hello, I'm Steve. Hello, I'm Liz. Hello. Hi, Liz. I'm Matthew. Hello. Nice to meet you. Liz has brought in a 30-kilo cast-iron statue of the Roman god Hercules to test the strength of Steve and metal conservator Matt Boldwood. What a wonderful uh, statue this Thank is. You. Thank you. Um, t tell me about it. Uh, he's about 160 years old, and he was in one of the mills in our town. Westbury's got a tradition of cloth making going back, oh, 500 years or so. So it's an important industry in the town. Why Hercules? Well, he's a symbol of strength, and he was on a beam engine, which is a very powerful machine. Um, it powered the whole mill. He was standing on the front of this huge cylinder, but it was quite a an interesting setting. It looked like a classical Greek or Roman temple because there were pillars on either side and a pediment above it all. But when the mill converted to mains electricity, Hercules lost his place of honor in the factory. He was destined for the scrapyard until in 1969, he was rescued by factory worker, Jack Ingram. Eventually he made his way through various owners in the town. He came to the Westbury Heritage Society in the end, about 25 years ago. Um, and he had an accident and he lost his club. Oh, right, that's what he was that's supposed to be missing, holding. yes, yeah, yes. Can I have a look at the... Uh... So what actually oh. happened? Uh, somebody was trying to move him and it uh, toppled over and his club came off. So he's actually fractured at that join yes, back here. Yes, yeah. Is that easy to repair? Um, cast iron is notoriously difficult to weld, but I can see here there's actually like a mechanical fixing. Uh, which we can take a look at to separate and see how best to repair it. I mean, you can weld it, but you will disturb the finish, the patina. Yes, yeah. Which is something we'd have to be quite careful of. When uh, Matt has worked his magic on uh, this statue, what is the plan? Oh, we'll put him back on display in the Heritage Centre. He's got a plinth that he normally stands on, but he's one of our main exhibits because he represents the industrial heritage of the town. Right, OK, so I guess it's over to you, Matt. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. OK, thank you, Liz, for bringing him in. Uh, leave it with us. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very thank much. Thank you, nice to meet Bye you. Bye-bye. I'm really hopeful that Hercules will soon be repaired and back in Westbury. He's been broken for 10 years now, and it's also the 25th anniversary of the founding of the Westbury Heritage Society. So to have Hercules put back together again would be a great achievement this year. So, um, how are you going to fix this? Are you going to weld this up? 
I think as it's got such a lovely patina to it, um, I'm probably going to try and avoid using any hot welding or anything that would disturb this. There's so much weight in this piece of club. Glue is just not going to be able to hold it. But if we put another pin and then use that as a Roman joint to hold it together, we should be able to make a nice, almost invisible repair. A Roman joint? Roman joints were used a lot on bronze sculptures where you wanted to join two parts or two separate castings together, brings them together and clamps the pieces. Ah, oh, excellent. Yeah, I love that. That's fantastic. Um, let's get it all over to your bench and uh, you can get cracking. Do you want to pick that up and uh, give me a hand with this? Your hand. Yeah. It's quite heavy. God, it is, isn't it? That really is heavy. There we go. There we go. Susie and Sonners have joined forces to repair and restore the classic 1960s leaf chair. Their biggest challenge is to recreate the fitted leather seat. First, they've created a template from Calico. Now, Susie's going to see if it will fit the frame of the chair. How you doing, Susie? Hello. You look a bit stuck there, girl. You all right? Yeah, well, yes, it's a, a little bit of a challenge because I'm trying to suspend my Calico pattern for the leaf chair okay. onto the frame and um, I started off with the tape on the, the calico and it keeps sticking to me so <laughs> I've put all little pieces all the way around ready to... Oh, so this to... tape is to be stuck yes. on there? Yes. Okay. And this one needs to, if you could... Stick oh, on there? Uh, yeah, just we'll down, go round. down a little bit, down, just down, there we go, super, yeah. And now I'm just going to go around the curve here and here. So if you'd like to maybe do that side. OK. So this is to see whether the pattern fits yep. then that you've created. Yep. Now, these seams, it doesn't want to be tight. But... So you want that like that, this stuck on there? Brilliant. Then? Yes. I think yeah. you've done a good job here. It's oh, working out. That's... <laughs> Was it my famous last words? <laughs> <laughs> then kiss of death there, huh? Yeah. So, Sonez, have we got this right then? Have you seen this? Oh, she's going to come over. Oh, yes. She's going to inspect our work. Stand by your bunks. <laughs> <laughs> that looks awesome. Is that yeah. cool? Yeah, really I'm really liking cool. this. Remember, yeah. we were worried about how this was going to lay. Yeah, no, that looks great, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm really yeah. relieved. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that, pleasantly surprised. That seam is perfect, because that's where the, your lowest point of weight's going your to bum's set. Is yeah. your yeah. bum's going to be yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, fabulous. So yeah. there's going to be eyelets all the way up here. How's yeah. it going to be attached? We're not using tape, are we? We're going to go a little no. bit high tech, aren't we? <laughs> well, we're thinking maybe it might be. <laughs> 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 it might be strength. Better idea. Or elastic so... bands. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be leather uh, belting going okay. all the way around. Which is yeah. Susie's department. Isn't yeah. It? Cool. Your, uh, I like the yeah, sound yeah. of that. Yeah. But no, that looks awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Confident the calico test sample has been a success, Susie can now go hell for leather with the real thing. This is a full grain hide, which means um, this is the strongest part, the top layer of the hide. And I want to make sure any area or any seam that's going to take a great deal of stress, we maximise those tougher areas of the hide. I'm really very confident that this is going to, to look quite lovely when I'm finished. Will has recruited Steve to help with the brasswork on the smoker stand. Before replacing the missing pipe rings, he's giving the old ones a bit of a polish. I think it was obviously very, very well used once upon a time. Someone very proud of their pipe smoking, I think. The smell of old smoke when I'm doing this is incredible. Just put the final touches on. For the new rings to fit perfectly and to match the old ones, Steve has no room for error. 13, I think that'll be all right. I'll give that a whirl. So I'm going to turn this out of the solid bar. It does seem a very large piece of brass to be turning just for those three pieces, but it's the only way I can uh, do it. Oh, I'm almost there.
Right, that should be deep enough for three of those units. But all Steve's efforts will be wasted if Will doesn't get the woodwork finished on time. So I've actually taken this back off of Steve's bench, glued it back on. So I've just finished polishing everything else. I'm just now going to polish this last piece here. And uh, hopefully then Steve will be ready with the brass hoops. But this is going out the door very soon. And I'm starting to get quite worried about the time. Checking the last thing I want to do is uh, turn it too small. It's very frustrating when you do that. So now that the uh, polish has dried, I don't want this to look too blingy. So I'm just using the soft wire wool to take that, the edge off that shine. I don't want it to look like it's been dipped in honey. <laughs> So the next process is um, I've got to shape the front of this and make it rounded like the original inserts. Good, that's done. So that's how they came off the lathe. That's how they've uh, turned up. And hopefully they'll slip in nicely. On the other side of the workshop, the statue of Hercules is testing the metal of conservator mat. This is quite nerve-wracking, because I do only get one go to get this hole in the right place. His plan to reattach Hercules' broken club relies entirely on Matt drilling through the 160-year-old iron in exactly the right place. Nice clean hole through there. Now, the trick with this kind of joint is that we actually want the hole in the structure inside to be slightly out of line so that when you hammer a pin through it, it clamps the two pieces together. I just need to drill through here slightly lower so that when the pin goes through, it gives it a nice firm fit. This offset fixing is known in the trade as a Roman joint. The technique is believed to have first been used by ancient Roman craftsmen. Just biting on that last bit. And we're through. Moment of truth. And that is almost perfect. You can just see half of the edge of the hole inside. So when the pin goes through, that should clamp that up quite nicely. All right, Matt, how are you getting on? Not too bad. Uh, just cutting the pin off that will make the final joint for the club. This is the Roman joint, is it? This is the Roman joint. I love learning about things like that. I'm going to use that in things that I make as well. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So it takes two of you to fix Hercules, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> God blimey. I thought you guys were stronger than this guy. No, no, no. What's no, going this on? This is no. a really, really, really clever fix. So there's nothing I could do to this? You can put the pin in if you want. Do the, the honours. <laughs> can, can I just ask a question? It, is there any danger in it splitting? The cast iron because if you're you're pulling it in, if the holes are out of line too much, it would then crack it, wouldn't that it? That is that is a possibility. So we've just got to hope that we've uh, got the right preparation. Now you tell me. <laughs> you put a little bit of pressure on me, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm just saying that this isn't plain sailing. This is this is a very skillful job. If it really doesn't go, stop. Yeah. If, okay. Because then we can moving. pull it back out. Yeah. Is that all right? I can't actually see, I'm just checking. Uh, he is a little bit off. Off, yeah. So what we could do is knock it back out, yeah? Mm. Who are you after? One of them. OK. There we go. Thanks, Steve. Quick job with the files. Yeah. We'll sort that out. 
You got the pin? Of course I have. Yeah. He's going. He's come through. There we are. And you can see it coming at a, like an angle. We've actually sort of used the pin as a spring almost to pull the two bits together. Pull them together. That's incredible. What are you trying to yeah. do? Break it? No. <laughs> it's not coming off. What you're going to do is chop off the ends. Yeah, we'll cut those down and then darken them up. So yeah. OK. Oh, well so done. So you don't see them. Yeah. I look forward to seeing that. No, well done. It's nice. Thank you. With Jane due back any moment, Will is finishing the repairs to the smoker's stand. He's just waiting for Steve to give him a ring or three. Hopefully, by the time I buff this up, if Steve has finished the brass rings, he'll be putting those finishing touches, the cherry on the top, and we can hand it back to Jane. Here they are. Yes. I'll push those in. They look absolutely amazing, Steve. Yeah. Would yeah. you like to tap them in? Yeah. Go on, yeah. Steve. I'll hold it to make sure it doesn't move. Ready? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ow. Hey. This is broken. How did you manage to do that? Please <laughs> <laughs> start, please. Take that out. I'll turn it off while you glue it. There you go. Yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> I didn't take into account the fact that the grain of the wood is running this way. So this is actually going to be quite a weak point here. So um, we've been tapping it too hard and it's broken. Steve's gone back over to his bench. He's making the brass hoops slightly narrower um, so they'll fit a lot better. And in the meantime, I've better find some glue. It'll probably be too loose now. Hopefully that's the right size now. So uh, I'm I'm using a really speedy glue. You're having to hold it? Yeah, I'm having to hold it and clamp it with my hands. Can I put the one in here? I'll put this one in, Steve, because I don't trust you to touch anything. I'm not in this. <laughs> I know. There you go. Good. If you want something done right the first time... Stop it. Don't ask Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. With the family heirloom finally back in one piece, it's almost time to hand it back to owner Jane. Really, the smoker stand, in essence, it's, it's just wood. Um, but to me, it's a lot more than just wood. It was always there. It was something that your grandparents had actually touched and, and, and used. So to me, it's not just a piece of wood, it's a piece of my childhood. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. And you, yes. So... <laughs> It's a bit of a giveaway, the fact that it's standing upright. Yes. <laughs> Should we take a look? Yes, please. Yes. Oh, wow. That is fantastic. It looks absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. Oh, I'm speechless. Thank you so much. I don't think it's ever looked as good. Never. So if I show you the top, it turned out that you're actually missing three of the brass hoops here. Oh, right. And um, our in-house wizard, Steve, was uh, able to make some new ones. And the leg, look at the yep. bottom. You can't even see where it was because there was a big hole and, yeah. a, and a gap there. You're a genius. It brings back some lovely, lovely memories. It really does. And over the last week, when I've been thinking about them, those memories have been rolling down my face a little bit. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. So how do you think your grandfather would feel if he could see it on its three legs now? He would be amazed, absolutely amazed. And he'd probably have it filled with pipes already. <laughs> <laughs> it's over to you to 
treasure for many more years to come. And I will do. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. During the last week, I've been thinking about the, the smoker's stand, and it made me quite emotional and quite tearful at times. I can't believe how beautiful it looks. And I think both my grandma and granddad would be really proud that it looks like it does now and, and that it's been mended. Susie is making headway with the leather work for the leaf chair. The seams are sewn, the excess leather has been trimmed. Now she's calling on the upholstery skills of Sonas to help piece together the three separate sections. This is so, a bit exciting bit. Yes. I'm actually going to start sewing from here because this section is far too thick right. for this machine to go through. Okay. So I'll finish it off by hand. Okay. This width of the foot here is what I'm going to line up to the turn. Yep. So as I'm going along, I'm just going to keep pulling it. OK. And if you feel like I'm pulling too much, just tell me stop. OK. Yep. Safe word, stop. OK. <laughs> cool. OK. <laughs> so this is the face stitch, which is just, just before you start, the most crucial stitch. It's going to help form the spine. Yeah but also it's very visible. Mm. So the goal is to, to make sure it looks really beautiful. And I'm just and going to go really, really slow. OK. Every stitch counts, doesn't it? Yeah, I think we'll just go in like incremental stages, stages and yeah. then reposition every now and then. That line looks amazing. Is it? Yeah, because you can see it, I can't. No, you, you keep going. <laughs> it looks great. That's why I need your eyes. Yeah. Great. All right. Yes. Should I pull, pull it? this puppy up? Yeah. Oh, look Ooh. at that. <laughs> that was lucky. <laughs> End of the bobbin. I could have sworn How that was a was that? full bobbin that I had on. That's so lucky. Could you imagine if that was somewhere in the middle? Yeah. Tears. No, I would have been quite upset. Absolutely. That's upholstery gods watching. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> now Hercules has been reunited with his broken club. Matt is striving to make the join as seamless as possible. So we've cut the pins off flat with the surface so that they're a nice snug fit. So I've just got to file back the last of the raised surface so it's really nice and flush with the original. And then I have a patinating solution that will darken the surface and hopefully make those heads invisible. Patinating solution is a mix of phosphoric and tannic acids which act on shiny new metal to give it an aged appearance. It starts off white, but it dries a purpley black. It should match in with the rest of Hercules. It's changing colour already. It works really quickly, and once we've got some wax over that, it should be a really nice repair. I mean, you've still got some of the evidence of the damage, but that's part of the object's history. It should be good for another 150 years now. It's looking good. You finished? Yeah, it's done. A cracking job. The break was so perfect, it yeah. just got back together. Brilliant. Buffed to perfection, all that remains is to return Hercules to the Wiltshire community, where Heritage Society Secretary Liz is awaiting the finished result. Well, we wanted to get Hercules restored because he's the only thing left of the beam engine from Bitten Mill. It will be a reminder to the people of Westbury of the legacy of the cloth mills in the town. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he looks like. Hello. Hello. Are you all right? Hello again. Word has spread about the strong man's restoration, and a crowd is gathering to witness his return. Among them is Sue Robinson, the daughter of former factory employee Jack Ingram. Um, my father started working at the mill in 1936. He was the maintenance engineer. After Laverton's closed down in 1969, 
he rescued Hercules because I think he was going to go for scrap. Yes. Yes. He'd be thrilled to bits, you know, that he was being um, properly looked after. Right. <laughs> Let's see what he looks like. Oh, there he is. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You can't see where it was broken, can you? No, you can't no. see no. a join at all. Oh, fantastic yeah. job. Uh, Good as That's new. Isn't it? That you is really good. Oh, wow. Well well what do you think, Sue? <laughs> I think he's brilliant. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I think we were a little bit concerned how the repair would actually look, but he's as good as new, and we're really pleased about that. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really pleased. I can come and look at him at any time and we might be reminded of my dad. Well, to have Hercules back repaired is, is really wonderful. It gives us a, a lovely piece of art to display in the Heritage Centre. And uh, now that he's back, we're going to have to look after him very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the workshop, Susie and Sonas have carefully cut out the challenging leather pattern for the leaf chair and are moulding it into shape. Now Susie needs to punch holes into the leather so it can be attached to the metal frame. I've turned the leather over and marked the spots where I need to punch holes for the lacing that's actually going to hold the leather onto the frame of the chair. It is at a point like this, as with any item that we're working on, that you've put so much into checking, triple checking, quadruple checking, that everything's right, that if you slip up at this stage of the game, that would be a disaster. So here goes. And there's the hole. So now I'm going to put some of the eyelets in. And what I have is the cylinder, and um, this sits into this little channel here. And then we push down the leather around that eyelet. So the, the, the tip of this tool goes down in there. As I hit it, it's going to flange the male part of the eyelet around that disc that I've just put on there. And there we have the eyelet. I think that looks rather beautiful, and that's going to be all the way around. I think it's just really going to highlight the, the whole style of this chair. That's three done. I've got about... Uh, 97 more to do, so I better get on with it. Dozens of holes and many meters of leather lacing later, the end is finally in sight. Just tidy off the ends and uh, I think we're finished. This tattered and torn 50 year old chair had been idle and empty for the last decade. Today, its original owner, Matilda, Nonna, as she's known to her family, has come to the repair shop with son-in-law, Jeff, and grandson, Carl, to collect their treasured design classic. Hello. Oh, my God. Hello. Hello. Come on Sorry. in. It's come lovely in. to in. see you. Thank so, it's been a little while since you've been without your chair. Yeah, yeah I know. Yes, and um, Nonna. You were the original owner of the chair. Yeah, I was. What attracted you to the chair? Well, it was unusual, something we'd never seen. We used to go to Hills nearly every week, and uh, we saw it and we thought, oh, we like that. But then our house was full of unusual things. Was oh, it? really? Oh, yeah. And so, Carl, how much have you missed this chair? Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't been able to use it for the last 10 years, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it, how it looks. Yeah, I'm going to try and see what it's like, what it is, looked like, what it was before. OK. We ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. 
Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, it's that. beautiful. It's lovely. What do you think, Nana? It's absolutely beautiful. Done it so nice. Oh, love the lips. Yes. It's really nice. That's really nice. I'm sorry I can't have it in my house. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm pleased. I'm pleased that you have it and you enjoy. Yeah, well, thanks, Nana. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm sitting it, Nana. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know whether I can get there. There you are. Yeah. It's like the old days. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, this is lovely. It's really nice. Is it comfy? How yeah, oh, yeah, it's very comfy. I can stay here now. Yeah. <laughs> does it remind you of sitting in it all this? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, in fact, it looks nicer than I thought it would, you oh, know. Oh, wow. Well, well, nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't know. I was a bit apprehensive. I thought Naturally. it can't look as nice as it was before. Yeah, of course. But it is very nice. Yeah. You've done really a good job. I'm really very impressed. Thank you very much. It's beautiful. I hope you enjoy it. I will. <laughs> I know we did. Well, it, it, was, it was a wonderful, wonderful chair to work on. It, it's in my heart forever now. Yeah. So, oh, I'm glad you, you enjoyed making it as well. I did. I really, really did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a lot. It's okay. really lovely. Thank, Thank you, you, Nana. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the way it looks. I uh, can't, can't wait to, to get in it. A lot better than I expected as well. Well, I don't know. I didn't expect anything. I just waited no. <laughs> to see what it looked like. But it's beautiful, beautifully done, and I'm glad that it's, it's like that. You know. And I hope it serves you a good thing for many years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Take yeah. care of it. <laughs> I will. Yeah.